As anyone who's been into Warhammer for any length of time will be able to tell you, there are four Chaos Gods, each with their own distinct flavour. And you know, sometimes it feels like with our little security guard here, there are five. But anyway, each one has its own style. And if you're collecting a Chaos Army, you might want to paint your troops to reflect one of the gods. Now, there's lots of ways of doing this, but you can really bring in some character here. So in this video, what we're going to do is show you four different ways of painting the armour for four different gods. Now, each one is going to use very different techniques that are all great things to know. So it's definitely worth seeing all of them because these are tricks that you can use on all kinds of miniatures. We hope you like it and we'll see you at the desk. Each Chaos God has a distinct colour palette, and this is a great thing to take inspiration from to make sure it's very clear which God your troops are dedicated to. And we're going to be starting out with Zinj, and here the dominant colours are blue and gold. Now you can certainly introduce some other colours in there, which is really fun to do, that really sort of sells that sort of changing nature of Zinj. But blue is a great one to have as the dominant thing, and because magic is a strong theme for Zinj, we're going to make it metallic blue as well to really go along with that magical feel. So to do this, what we need to do is start out by painting our armour with a bright silver, and the one I'm going to use is some blade. Now all these miniatures have been undercoated with a grey undercoat, they can do these techniques over any undercoat colour you want to use. Whatever the case though, you just need to make sure that this silver goes on really smoothly. So as ever, make sure you thin it down with that little bit of water and go for an appropriate brush for the area you're doing, depending on the model you've got. I have here a size one from our sopas. And with it, what we want to do is just start blocking in that armour. So it's a matter of just spotting it, such as around here, and just applying two thin coats to ensure it's nice and smooth and strong in the finish before we move on to the next stage. I've built up that nice and shiny silver base coat, and I did mention it's going to be blue, and trust me, it is going to be blue, but it's important that we have that silver first of all, because this is going to shine through as we start applying our next colours, which are all going to be contrast paints, and so have that nice translucency about them. And the first one we're going to use here is Griff Charger Grey, which is sort of like a bluish grey, and there's two main reasons I'm putting this on first before we really lean into the blues and greens and things like that. It's first of all going to provide a little bit more depth in the shadow, so a little bit of shading there and a slight bluish tint to it as well, which we're going to build upon, but also what it's going to do is to give a different sort of surface texture than what we've got at the moment because right now we've got that silver which is very smooth and the contrast paint is going to be ever slightly more rough meaning that future contrast paints will stick better over the top so basically they'll stay where we put them as opposed to just slipping off the model. So what we need to do is just evenly apply this over each of the panels just carefully one at a time and so I'm sticking to my size one brush for this I'm going to use a palette as well just to make sure my brush isn't overloaded with too much at once because we don't want to overdo it. Remember a contrast paint might appear to look like a wash at first glance it does behave differently it tends to stick to things a little bit more, it tends to settle on flat areas a little bit. And so when you're applying it, you need to bear that in mind by picking a starting point and working your way across the model, essentially like colouring it in. So for example, if I start on this niche down here, I'm going to start on this corner and apply it, get it nice and smooth, and then just move on from there, just letting it settle as it will. That contrast paint is completely dry and you can see the result is a really nice polished metal. So actually this is an effect that you can use on Zinch things because it does have a slight bluishness to it, but we're going to take it much further with much more blue now because what we're going to do is go over with some more contrast paints. What I've got is two and I'm going to be leaning on one more than the other one and that first one is going to be some Achillean green, but we're going to add in a little bit of Pterodon Turquoise too to some random points just for a bit of variety. Now don't be fooled by the names, Achillean green is actually more blue than Pterodon Turquoise, which is more green. So I don't know why they name this way, but what we're going to be doing is using that Achillean green for the initial point because it is that really nice blue that we're looking for. Perfect for Zinj. You can see I've got them both here. I'm using my size one brush once again and I'll start out getting some Achillean green ready and you can see this is one of the stronger contrast paints so I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it just to thin it ever so slightly. So there we go. And then we also want to get some Pterodon turquoise ready so just grab some of that too. Pop that onto the palette. You can see what I mean about it being much more green. Again, just add a bit of water to it because it's a very strong dark colour. So mix that in and there we go. So what we're going to do is start out with that Achillean green and like with all contrast paints, just pick one starting point and work your way along. In the case of this armour, I recommend you do one panel at a time. So for example, we've got this panel on the thigh just here. What we want to do is just pick a starting point like this corner and then just start colouring it in to get that really nice blue. And as you're doing this, every now and then, just grab a little bit of the Pterodon Turquoise and just add that and let the two mix as you go along to get a little bit of variety in the tone.
With that step done, you can see we get quite a dramatic transformation and the model looks blue at first glance, but the more you look at it, the more you'll start to notice those little hints of green swirling around in there. So perfect for the magical feel of the changer of the ways. With that done, we now need to put in the other main color, which is the gold. We're gonna go for a really warm, rich gold here. So I'm gonna start out with some dragon's gold. Now to apply it, I'm still gonna go for my size one brush, but this is a matter of just choosing whatever you're comfortable with, because here we're picking out details like trim, so all the arrows, that sort of thing. And it'll vary depending on what model you're doing and how big these details are. But throughout, it's just a matter of, as ever, just making sure the paint's nicely thin so you've got the control over it, and then you're just gonna start looking for these features that you want to pick out, then work your way around them. So for example, this arrow right here. I'm happy with those gold details there picked out. So now what we need to do is apply the wash to those to give them their depth and definition. And here, what we're gonna go for is a nice warm color to give a real nice contrast between the gold and that cold blue. So for that warm gold, what we're gonna use is some flesh wash. And to apply it, I'm still using size one brush. Again, change brush as you need to. The key thing with this is to be careful not to get it onto that blue. So definitely use a palette to control how much is on the brush there. You don't need loads and loads of this. So once you have got that ready, it's just a matter of being nice and steady, carefully moving in and painting this directly over the top of all of that gold. Once the wash is dry, all we've got to do now is to highlight both the blue metal and also that gold. And for this, we'll start out with the bluish metal. And here, what we're gonna do is go back to our bright silver. So the same one we originally used for the base coat. In this case, it's gonna be mithril blade. And then for the gold, we want a very nice pale gold. So in this case, I'm gonna use some glistening gold. But first of all, we need mithril blade. And for this, I'm going for a much smaller brush now. I'm using a size double zero because here I'm going in for some edge highlighting. I'm just looking for the sharpest edges and corners across the armor and just wanna follow each of those. So remember the trick for doing this is to make sure your paints thing correctly so it's nice and smooth but not so thin that it's running out of control and then just make sure you don't have loads of it on your brush at once and then all you got to do is start looking for these sharper edges and what we want to do is use the side of the brush where possible to skim along them so for example on the shoulder just here we sort of angle like this so we're just touching the edge and just gently skim away around so we get that sharp highlight running along these edges here like this With that highlight applied, you can see all that armor now really pops out nicely, and so we just need to do the same thing to the gold. And for this, I'm using some glistening gold, and this is once again an edge highlight, looking for all the sharp corners and following along them. And because these tend to be these smaller patterns, often you'll just need to use the tip of your brush just to follow that edge, and to do so, just make sure you're nice and steady, really bracing the model, and paint this downward direction towards yourself to get those neat lines. And with that gold now fully highlighted, you can see the Zinch themed armor is complete. And the real trick to doing this one is the application of the contrast paints. Remember, it's all about just being efficient and neat with applying them. By just picking one panel at a time, making sure you smoothly cover it and then leave it to dry to get that nice smooth finish. We're now gonna move on to Zinch's greatest rival, who is Nurgle. And for Nurgle, what we thought we'd do is give a sort of subtle, almost texture into the armor, almost like it's rotting in the very metal itself. So a really sort of dreary, decaying, sort of streaky appearance to it. Almost like wood grain, really. And to do this, what we need to do is start out with a nice green to get things going. I'm gonna use some Death World Forest here, though you could, of course, do what we're gonna do here with just about any green that you want to use. Whatever you choose, what you need to go for is a good brush for base coat and the armor plates. And once again, I'm using my size one brush here. And as ever, it's just a matter of getting that good base coat first of all. Just gonna make sure it's nicely thinned down on the palette and then what we're gonna do is just move and start blocking in these panels. So it's just a matter of working through them one at a time, making sure they have an even finish of this color. Once you have that even green across that armor, the next thing to do is to start to build up this subtle texture that we're gonna go for. And to do this, what we now need is a brighter green as well as our original green. So I'm gonna be using some Death World Forest again, but now we're gonna introduce some Elysian green to it. And the way to do this is to pick a small area at once and do the effect on it and then work your way around the miniature. So to do it, we need some Death World Forest, which you can see I've still got set up from the previous stage. So I'll just thin it down just a little bit more for this. And then what we need is some Elysian green ready next to it. And we'll be drawing from both of these together almost at the same time really and just playing around with it as we go along. So I just need to get some of that there ready and it's pretty thin already so I'm happy with that. And what we need to do then is start with the dark of the two. So starting with Death World Forest. So what you need to do is just pick an area and I'm gonna do part of the back of the shield just here. And what we need to do is just start out by quickly applying a thin coat of this across the whole area so we've got some paint to play with. And then it's just a matter of picking up the other one, so in this case Elysian Green, and starting to apply it as streaks uh, vertical on the miniature. We just sort of wanna go across it like this, just quite randomly back and forth, just building it up. 
Then grab some of the darker one, start to play around with that too, just to help blend it together a little bit, being careful not to go over everything from the previous stage. Then back to the brighter green, and again, just start to work some of this in brighter streaks like this. Now, the idea is to go back and forth and play around with the color that we've got on there so that we don't get any really sudden jumps of color. So we get a sort of subtle blend of it. And this way you can see we can play around and start to build up that green. Now, remember, always do this in the length of the actual, well, length of the limb or length of the body. So in the case of the shield, it means going up and down like this. When it comes to the legs, it means following up and down them. But when it goes to the arms, you'll want to go across them in that sort of direction just there. I built up those streaks there on the shield and you can see I've got them on the armor as well. So now what we can do is increase the contrast by introducing a darker green into this. Still an olive green though, and the one I'm gonna use for it is Death Core Drab. But at the same time, I've still got the other two available in case we need them just to ease any gradients here. So remember that's Death Ward Forest and also Elysian Green. But it's Death Core Drab that I need to set up first of all. And once again, what we're gonna do is just get some of this thinned down and ready on the palette. And you can see now how having a wet palette is so useful for a technique like this because those paints I was using for the previous stage there they're still available so we can still grab them if we need to just to help ease things together. But what I'm going to do with this is, as ever, make sure it's nicely thinned down, make sure there's not much on the brush. And here I'm going to look to start to introduce it into some areas just to make it a little bit darker in some points. And I'm really looking for areas where there's not so much Elysian Green. So this little bit just here, for example, what I want to do is just thinly start applying it in, just streaking it in that vertical motion there like that. If you ever find the jump is a little bit too much like is happening there, then you can always make sure you just grab one of those other colors we've got and just use it just to start blending it together by just painting around it and over it there like that, just merging the colors and playing around with them to get that streaky appearance appearing there on the shield. Now that stage is finished, you can see we've got much more contrast going off on that texture there. And so now we can highlight all of the green. And for this, what I've got is some augering camo, and this is gonna be an edge highlight. So I've switched to a small brush now. I've got a size double zero for this. And what I want to do whilst edge highlighting is also just use it to emphasize some of the streaks that appear on the edges of panels. So not in the middle this time, just a few of them around the outside, just to again, again really help build that texture. So for it, make sure that paint's nicely thin so you can do the edge highlighting with it just to get that control there, make sure the brush isn't overloaded. And then it's just a matter of working your way around all these edges. So for example, on this thigh plate just here, I want to approach the side of the brush and just very gently apply this color for that sharp green just in the outer edge just there and along here. But you can see as I go along this edge, we do have some of those streaks coming up. So what I want to do is just make sure I get a few of those. It doesn't have to be all of them, just one or two, just to help emphasize them that little bit more. I've finished applying the highlight now and you can see the detail of the armor pops out really nicely, but we do need some shading and so that's what we're gonna do now. And here, rather than using a wash, I wanna do something a little bit different for a bit more fine control. And that is to paint in a dark brown into the recesses. So kind of fine lining with it really. And this one's nice dark sort of warm brown. And so I'm gonna use some cuirass leather for this. And what we want to do is just make sure it's nicely thinned on the palette a little bit more than we normally would. So it's gonna help it just run into those corners and nooks and crannies and things. So bringing it right down to about this point here. And then using a fine brush, I'm still using my double zero here. We're just looking for all the recesses, corners and things. We just want to paint it directly into them. So for example, this plate that we got here on top of the leg, it's gonna go into the corner just here and just run it right in there. And this will give that really nice bit of shading in that area too, as well as the sort of appearance of age and decay. So perfect for Nurgle. And with that, the green of this armor is now complete, but we do need to paint in the trim. And for this, what we thought we'd do is go for some silver. And you could do some brass if you want to with some flashes of verdigris on there, but we wanna go for some silver because we can make it nice and rusty and make it quite orange. So to do this, we need to first of all paint it in a sort of a grimy silver color. So we'll base coat it using some surcoat silver, then wash with some battle mud wash. And then for the highlight, what we'll need is mithril blade. So we'll start out with surcoat silver for the base coat and to apply it, I'm actually still using my size double zero here because some of this detail is quite fine, but let's feel free to go for whatever size brush you feel comfortable with for this stage. And for your particular Chaos Warrior, what you need to do is just look around it for the small little metal details that you get on top of the green armor. Now the Chaos Star on the shield is the most obvious example here, so I'm gonna paint that, and it's just a matter of being as neat as possible as you block in this pattern. With the base coat done, you're then ready to neatly apply a brown wash over the top. In this case, I'm using some battle mud wash and it's just a matter of taking your time to keep it just on the silver. And once that wash is completely dry, you're then ready to highlight this grubby metal using a bright silver. I'm using some mithril blade here and once again, it's an edge highlight neatly applied around all the edges. 
Now that we've got that dirty metal highlighted, the next thing to do is just add some rust to it. And for this, we're gonna use two colors. First of all, some Mornfang Brown and then some Scrag Brown. And both these are gonna be applied in a very similar way, starting out with Mornfang Brown. I've got my small brush again, the size double zero. And what I'm gonna do is just get some of this onto my regular palette and then heavily water it down to make it really, really thin, almost turning it into a kind of a wash really, because what we want to do is just run this onto the model. It's like collecting some of the recesses to be where rust would collect. So what we need to do is get it to that point then and then just start applying it. And if we take a look at the shield, what it's going to be is areas like around rivets and things around spikes. So for example, around here, what we're going to do is just start dotting it in there like that. And you can bring some of it out onto the flat of these metal parts if you want to, just to color it a little bit, make it a little bit more brownish and orange. So there we go. So you're just dotting it on to get a natural appearance to it. And if you want to, you can also have some of it streaking down onto the green. So if you imagine this was in the rain and there was water collecting on it, just think about where that would go. So for example, in this spike, it would come down to collect at this little point here and then just start running down the green in areas like this. Once the Mornfang Brown is completely dry, you're then ready to move on to Scrag Brown, which has been thinned down in the exact same way. And with this, we're just gonna wash it on top of the previous color. So that previous brown, we just want to add a little bit of this on top. And you can see it is much brighter, much more orange. And so this way we get that brighter rust just appearing on top of the previous one. And once that second brown is completely dry too, you can see we've got the rust effect there on the metal. And with that, the Nurgle armor is complete. And doing this one is really all about that streaky pattern there on the green. And doing this is really fun, but it's a very organic process. So as you're doing it, you might decide you want to adjust it ever so slightly. I encourage you definitely to play around with it as you go along. But remember, just to finish it off, you're looking for that bright highlight on the edges, and just a few little flicks along the corners as well, just to help bring out that texture. Next up, we got Slanesh, and for Slanesh, the color palette tends to be towards purples and pinks and things like that. But the word that I really want to have in mind here is lush. So we're looking for really expensive colors. So these purples are going to be really deep and really, well, lush, but also we're going to trim it using a really pale gold, so a very expensive looking gold. But to do this, we need to start out with that purple. So the one I picked out for this is Phoenician purple, and to apply it, I've got my size one brush once again. And for this first step, all we need to do is block everything in. Now, what we're going to do after this is start to introduce a second tone into it, so we get like a really nice gradient and variety of color on there but this is just to get things going really so just think of it as a base coat all over with that paint thinned down as ever to make sure it's nice and smooth and all you got to do is just work your way around these armor plates just blocking them in entirely one at a time I finished building up that purple base coat there on the armor, so now we can move on to the next step, which is going to be to introduce a second tone to it. And again, we're looking for those lush colors. So what I'm gonna do is add in some Screamer Pink and we're gonna blend it into that Phoenician Purple. So we're applying both these paints at the same time and wet blending is a technique we're going to use. Now, if you've never done wet blending before, I really do encourage you to give it a try because it's much, much easier to do than you might first think, but it's also really fun and it looks great. So it's definitely something worth experimenting with because, well, you'll be surprised what you can do here. What you need to do to get it ready first of all is to have a wet palette. It really does help out with this because it keeps the paint pliable for longer. And you need to set up both colors to get going with it. So I've got my size one brush again for this. I'm just gonna get some of that Phoenician purple ready like we used in the previous stage. So just a bit more there on the palette and thin down and ready to go. And then what we need is some of the Screamer Pink as well. So on this, I'll just get it ready on the palette next to it so we can draw from both at the same time. Again, just making sure it's thinned nicely, not too much, but just so it's nice and smooth like this. And then we're ready to go. So to do this, pick one panel at a time and do the blending effect over it. And to do it, what we want to do is start out with the Phoenician Purple and we're gonna pull the Screamer Pink into it. So we'll just load up with some of this and what we're gonna do is start out with this plate just here on the thigh. What we need to do is apply this color about two thirds of the way up. So we're looking at this sort of distance here. We just want to quickly apply it over that side and then over that side. And then just grab some of your Screamer Pink and I'm not even washing my brush to do this. Let's load up with some of this. We're gonna to go to the top and then go back and forth and then just pull it down into that purple beneath it, just letting them merge as we go along. Now you might find on the first pass, it might look a little bit rough, but it's not a problem. Just let it dry and then repeat this process for a second coat and you'll find the second one is smoother than the first. And this way you'll get a nice gradient between the two. If you want to, you can go back as well. So back to the Phoenician purple, you can always use this and go upwards to help ease it a little bit. But you see, it's very easy to get that nice gradient between the two. So now what I'm gonna do is just carry on doing this on each of these panels. And 
And there we are, all those armor panels have been blended, as has the shield. And as I mentioned, doing this is a lot easier than you might first think, so definitely encourage you to give it a go. But once you're happy with it, the next thing we need to do is to highlight it. And we want to tie these two colors together now. So what I'm going for is a highlight that works on both. What I've got is some pink horror, and to apply it, it's going to be, well, an edge highlighting thing, so it's down to a small brush here, so I'm using my size double zero. Now with this paint, definitely make sure you thin it down so you get that translucency about it, so some of the color beneath shows through, and this will help ease it as the highlight over both of them. So just add that bit of water to bring it down to about this point, and then you won't need very much on your brush. It's just a matter of looking for all the edges on those armor panels and following around each one, being as neat as you can throughout. So just very carefully applied, just building it up so you get that sharp highlight along the edge of each panel. With the highlight on there, you can see it ties those colors together nicely, and you can see there on the shield as well. And with that done, what we now need is just a little bit of shading just to deepen the recesses a bit. And for this, what we're gonna do is just paint it in by hand once again, using a normal acrylic paint, just for a nice sharp finish to it. So I've got some Doom Death Black here, so a really nice pitch black, and to apply it, I'm sticking to my size double zero brush. And with it, we've just gotta get some of this nicely thinned down. So it's quite runny, really, quite inky. We're looking for about this sort of consistency here. And then it's just a matter of making sure there's not loads in the brush, because with this, we're looking for all the corners and we just want to carefully paint it into them. So for example, this panel just here, I just want to paint it on this side here. So kind of going to the underside where it goes down to the leg there like that. So we've got some really nice shading to help define this area. That shading is done, and so now we can move on to painting the trim. And remember here, what we want is some really expensive looking gold. So we're gonna go for some white gold with a tint of purple to help it match with that Slanesh feel. So to do it, I want a very bright gold as the base coat. I'm gonna go for some glistening gold here, and then we're gonna wash over that with Druki Violet for the shading. After that, we'll layer it again using glistening gold to bring the shine back to it to make it look really expensive. And then for the highlight, we need a silver. Here, I'm gonna use some Mithril Blade. But first of all, what we need is that glistening gold and to apply it, I'm going for my size one brush, though of course go for whatever one you feel comfortable with at this stage, because all you gotta do is just go around looking for all those details like arrows and things, you know, all those decorations that the Chaos Armor have on them. So all that sort of thing. Once you've got the paint ready, you just gotta look around for those features. So for example, we're looking at things like this spike on the front of the armor just here. Just want to neatly block it in to get it that nice shiny gold. Once you've got that gold base coated, the next thing to do is paint a purple wash over the top. So here I'm using some Druki Violet, and this is gonna give us some nice shading, but also a hint of purple in the end, just to give the impression that that gold is corrupted by Slanesh. The wash is dry, so now we're back to glistening gold to layer the gold. And with this, I've switched to a smaller brush for a little bit more control, so I'm down to a size double zero here. And what we want to do is thinly apply it to most of it, but just looking for recesses where more wash settled and avoid them. So for example, around this little bolt just here, you see I'm just leaving it purple in the recess around it. And at the same time at this stage, I'm gonna keep an eye out for any bolts and rivets and things, such as these up here, and pick them out as well. And then finally on the gold, we just need a bright silver to highlight it. So here I'm using some Mithril Blade applied to the size double zero brush, and I'm just putting on as an edge highlight around all of this gold. And with that, this Slaneshi style of armor is complete. And in doing this one, of course, the main technique is doing that wet blending between those two colors to get that sort of variant happening on the armor plates before highlighting them. And this is, of course, wet blending, which does have a reputation being very difficult to do, but it is easier than you might think. And it's definitely worth giving it a go because I think you'll surprise yourself with how easy it is to get a great result. The final style of armor we're gonna paint is one to go for corn. And of course, for corn, what we need is nice red and also brass. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. But with the red, instead of just painting it as a flat red, instead we're gonna introduce a subtle texture into it, almost to give the appearance of kind of like bloody muscle. That's the sort of thing that we're going for here. And to do it, we need to start out by establishing that nice deep red. So to do this, I'm gonna base coat using some corn red, then wash it with a brown wash, and I'm gonna use some battle mud wash for this. And once that's dry, we'll then return to corn red and layer it on just to build up the color a little bit on raised edge areas. So we're going to start out with that base coat of corn red and for this I've gone back to my size one brush and for this it's just a matter of painting in that armor so nice and straightforward here. I just need to get that paint nicely thinned down so it's really smooth so down to about that point there and then all we've got to do is just start blocking all these armor plates such as this one just around here making sure to work the color into all the nooks and crannies as we go along. That base coat's done, so now it's time for the wash. And here I'm using a dark brown wash. I've got some battle mud wash here, and all we're gonna do is paint it directly over all the red armor plates.
And once that wash is completely dry, we can return to corn red and this time we're gonna layer it on. So we just need to paint it over most of the armor plates, just looking for any recesses and carefully avoiding them. So for example, around these rivets and also we've got these little splashes in the armor to avoid as well. With those stages done, we've got a nice even red to work from as we start to build up the effect. And that's what we're gonna start doing now by sponging on a brighter red. And here, what I'm gonna go for is some Evelson Scarlet. And what we want to do is make sure that this is going to fade into the surrounding color. So we need to make sure it's fairly thin. So for that reason, I'm getting the paint set up on my wet palette. And you can see I've already got some Evelson Scarlet here. I'm just gonna make sure it's thinned down with a bit of water. So the idea is it's got some translucency about it. So as it dries, it's gonna fade a little bit into the surrounding red. So we just need to bring it down to around right about that point just there. Then with that prepared to apply it, instead what we need is a piece of sponge. Only a little bit of sponge will do just fine. I've got a small bit here which I've just torn up so it's nice and rough on the end. And with it, we just want to pick up some of this thinned down paint onto it. So just get that loaded on there. And then I've got my dry palette here because I'm going to use this just to test exactly what's on the sponge. So I'm just gonna dot it and move along like that until I'm getting this sort of appearance just here. And then we can start applying it to the model. And all we gotta do is just work our way around this red armor, just gently dotting it on so we get this nice random speckled pattern on that plate. The sponging's done, so you can see now we've got it speckled all across the armor, almost like blood splatter. And now we just wanna make it a little bit brighter in some areas with a slightly brighter red. So for this, what I've got is some demon red, and I'm going to apply it with my size double zero brush now, because with this, I'm just gonna dot it in some select areas just to help them pop out a little bit more, really. And I'm gonna be looking at how the sponges put the paint on it in the previous stage and looking for areas where it's stronger and basically going at those parts. So for example, Take a look at the shield once again. You can see we've got a few little stronger points around here. So all I'm gonna do is just go in and just dot a few of these to make them a little bit brighter in random areas. Once that's done, we're then ready to move on to adding a highlight onto all of this armor. And to do this, what we need to do is jump back to some Evelson Scarlet, but this time apply it as an edge highlight. So to do it, go for whatever brush you're comfortable with for this sort of thing. I'm back to my size double zero here, and it's just a matter now of following along all the edges of all the armor plates to give them that sharp finish and to help them stand out. So once you've got your paint thinned and ready, it's just a matter of looking for those edges and following along each of them. So for example, these plates around here, it's just a matter of very carefully going in, looking for that edge and just following along the whole length of it. Now the red is highlighted, it's time to move on to painting that trim. And for corn, of course, the classic color is to go for some brass trims. That's what we're gonna do here, starting out with a base coat of Spartan bronze, and then we'll wash it with a brown wash. I'm gonna use some battle mud wash here. And then for the highlight, what I'm gonna use is some glistening gold. But first of all, Spartan bronze is what we need for the base coat. And to apply it, I've gone back to my size one brush. And here, it's just a matter of looking for all that trim detail and picking it out, which will, of course, vary quite a bit, depending on what exactly you're painting. But in this case, we're looking at things like the Chaos Star that appears on the shield just here, and it's just a matter of neatly picking all of this out at this stage. With that base coat done, we're now ready for the wash. And in this case, we need a dark brown wash, so it's Battle Mud wash I'm using here, painted directly over all the bronze. And once that wash is dry, you're then ready to move on to a light gold. So here I'm using some glistening gold applied to my size double zero brush. And this is just gonna be an edge highlight on all of this bronze, applied as neatly as possible. And at the same time, we can also use this to pick out all these rivets as well. With that trim now highlighted, we can move on to the last stage, which is going to be to put some gloss varnish over the top of the red armor to give it that sort of wet, bloody appearance. And for this, what we need is a gloss varnish. So I'm gonna use some art coat for this. And to apply it, I've gone for my size one brush. And all we need to do is just neatly apply this only over the red, so avoiding that metallic trim. So to approach it almost like a layer, making sure the paint's just had that little bit of water added into it, well, the varnish, just so it's a little bit easier to control. And then it's just a matter of carefully applying it onto all these plates, just making sure not to allow it to go into the recesses. That varnish is now completely dry, and with that, this corn bloody style armor is complete. And with this, it's a really fun thing to do when you're doing that pattern, because if you want to, you can take it even further by doing some little freehand designs in there if you want. So for example, things like the mark of corn, maybe some screaming paces, the choice really is yours, but it's definitely something that's really fun to play around with. 
So there you go, four very different ways of painting armor for four very different Chaos Gods. Now remember the most important thing about this is just to have the right sort of color palette to reflect the god that you're looking to represent on your miniatures. The actual techniques, you can always apply them from different ones that we used here and mix and match as much as you like. And if you've not tried something like this before, I definitely encourage you to give it a go because it's really fun and it's something very different that can really spice up your army and really make your characters and things stand out. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you again very soon.